In ZBrush 408, there is a new gizmo for transformations. And you can either just click either rotate or move and it'll just pull up the same gizmo. You can scale it, you can transpose it, you can scale along an axis, you can rotate along different axis, axes, axes, I don't know. <laughs> and you can go back to the original transpose tool as well, like this. Now if you go back, wherever it was will be the new center for the transpose. Up here, there's a lot of different options. This lock option allows you to either affect the geometry or not. So when it's locked, it will, and when it's not, it won't. It's good to just keep it locked for most of the time and then just hit the Alt button is what I found. This pin, um, sorry, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this back before I do anything else. So as I move this, I'm holding Alt and you can see that I can position it where I want and then I can let go of Alt and then scale it where I want or transpose it according to how I want to. So if you hold shift, you can also snap to a degree. So it's going to be snapping by five. You can scale by percentages, so plus five percentage, like that, but you can't transpose. Right here, you can affect all the subtools. So if I unhide these and I start to move it with that on, you'll see it'll rotate everything, which is really, really cool. This just resets the, the original origin. So go ahead and this one, it does mesh to access, so it puts it to the center, like such. So if I turn on the floor there, you can see it's at the center now. So let's go ahead and you can see it's right where the center of the head is. Okay. Then this right here is go to unmask center. So if you mask a center, it'll actually make that the pivot point. So I'm going to go ahead and mask this, make a rotation, and then it goes to the center of the un unmask section. It's really cool. This one is sticky. I don't use this as much because it just always puts the cursor back to where it was, no matter what. So if I trans transform it, it's, it snaps it back there. Um, so I need to turn sticky off, and then I can go ahead and put the back to median, and it goes there, like that. So you can go ahead and play around with those and see how those work. There are also options like bend arc and deform and twist, and they do pretty much what you think they do. So we're just going to look at two of these really fast. I'm going to go to this and go to deform. You'll see it makes a cage with different little points. Um, and so as I go back to it, sorry, you can see these different points are able to be selected and moved. Up here, you have these little gizmos that allow you to add more lines to the cage. So I can just go like this and add a few more. You can kind of move the pivot points here as well if you want to with the different ones. So you can play around with the different transforms. But as I go back to it, you can also increase the smoothness or decrease it. So I'm just going to move it like this and show you what that looks like. So let's just try and go to the smoothness. That's not smoothness. <laughs> I got the wrong one, so let me move that back. Uh, right about here, I'm going to change the smoothness. And you're going to see how it starts to get really really not smooth if you move it down like that. So the options for this are really good. Now let's go ahead and go to this. You can see it's just three cylinders like this. I'm going to go to the twist and now I can twist on axes. So I could twist on this axis but I really don't want to because that's not the axis I want to twist on. I want to twist on this one and then I can twist above or below like that and go ahead and twist the object. So I can go ahead and accept that and now I have a new a new twisted mesh. There's text 3D as well that I want to talk about, where you can go new text and to just type in whatever you would like to. So I'm just going to write random art attack, and it creates a 3D 3 mesh of the text. You can affect it, so I can do bevel, or I could make the roundness or the resolution higher. Uh, I can make it thicker if I wanted to. I could I could change the spacing. I can even go back and rechange the text. So let me add a bevel there, and let's go ahead and get this the way we want. There we go. And let's go ahead and change the font here if you want to, but I'm just going to change the text. So I'm just going to put an exclamation mark. So now, as you zoom out, you can see that there's an exclamation mark. So it's you can change it on the fly, which is very cool. You can also import SVGs by going New SVG, and I'm just going to click one that I already have prepared. And it applies the same, the same process to this. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll up and hide these other things. And I'm going to change this bevel down a bit so that you can see these puzzle pieces. So just change that down, and you can see that it's also able to be affected on the fly. And there you go. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Like, it, like us if it was, and follow us on social media.